Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to do an example problem for you today on epicyclical gearing. This is part of the machine design playlist. And I wanted to do an example using both the tabular method and the algebraic method. Now, what I have here is a sample problem, an example problem. Uh, and what we can see is that we've got a input for the ring, the ring gear which is this gray mass here. Let me put my, my uh, laser pointer on. So you get the, the ring gear is here and it's, you know, you can see it's labeled up here. So the outermost section is the ring gear. Uh, you've got the arm, which is here, which would carries the planet gear. And then you've got the sun gear. You know, the, here you've got the hash marks going in the other direction. So you got the sun, planet ring and the planets are being carried by the arm and in some instances you see people call that the carrier now what we have here is the ring is the input so whatever our power source let me go here and make this a pin is coming in here and our arm is the output so you can see the arm which is to connect to the ring and it comes out here so and this is connected to some sort of an output so you got an input uh, coming here and an output going here on the other you know coming out at the other end so this is part of some sort of a uh, gearbox uh, that this is uh, transmitting to uh, to an output so we have the ring as the input, the arm as the output, and we've got an input speed of 3,000 RPM. So 3,000 RPM and 300 Newton meters of torque coming in here. And, you know, you've got the, the sun gear here is stationary. So it is causing, you know, whatever rotation here on this, this ring, 3,000 RPM, and you're getting some sort of an output here and the ring gear is being kept in the stationary position. And they give us a, a setup here where the sun has 40 teeth, the ring has 20 teeth, and the, excuse me, planet has 20 teeth, and the ring has 200 teeth. Now there are some rules of gearing where that might not be a more a suitable, but the math will still, you know, show up in, in this one. You know, that ratio of, of teeth um, is a little bit uh, extreme. But we, we can still do the math to prove our, our point. So what we're being asked to do is calculate the output speed, so what's coming from this arm, and the torque. So basically we need some sort of velocity ratio, or need to, a method of calculating the velocity ratio, to what's going to happen with this 3,000 RPM to the, you know, what's going to be the output for that, as well as what's going to happen to the torque as 300 Newton meters comes here and comes out depending on whatever the end goal of this this design setup is now this setup has a specific name to it you know it's a specific thing that we're, we're looking for here um, when you have this sort of setup like this what you have is the ring is the input the arm is the output that is an underdrive condition you know anytime your arm is the output so if you're your ring is the input or if the sun is the input but your arm is the output or your carrier is the output you're going into underdrive so what we should expect from this sort of setup is that the rpms are going to go down and the torque is going to go up now we don't know exactly what it's going to be but it will have some ratio with the teeth that will will give us our result so let's move forward with this. And first we'll look at the tabular method of, of doing this. The first, again, here's our problem all set up. You know, this is just a review. I've already got a video going over how this is developed. But just to go through it, these are just different conditions for the arm, the sun gear, and the ring gear. And showing the ratio and the differences between what's going on. So if your arm is, is zero, you know, basically not moving, and you know, your arm is fixed, you know, and your sun gear is just making one rotation, the ring gear will move with this particular rotation between the two gears, your, you know, your, your sun to your arm. 
you know, in the opposite direction. Your basically your planet gears are going to work as idler gears, so it'll cause a change in direction. And what's most important about this whole tabular method, you know, as we go through these different conditions, you know, if the variable of x, you know, this is what the ratio will end up being. And then you got what happens, you know, with the uh, all the elements rotate with y, you know, basically a relative motion. Um, and then you've got the final equations. The tab the method boils down to these three equations. You know, the direction of the arm. This uh, defines the direction of the sun gear and the motion of the sun gear, the motion of the arm and the motion of the sun gear, as well as this is how you calculate for the uh, ring gear. So this is what the, the tabular method ultimately comes down to. Now, what we do know there are a few things. Uh, we know that the ring is the input, so we know that this equation we can set to 3000 RPM. Uh, we also know that the sun is stationary. We can set this to zero. And we know that we've got um, an output for the arm, and that's the, what we're trying to figure out. Now, you also notice that y shows up in all these equations, but you've got two variables and two, and basically one unknown, excuse me, one unknown. So this way we should be able to try and figure out what are, what we're going to be coming to on here. Two, excuse me, two variables and, and two unknowns. Or two, excuse me, two, three equations with two unknowns. Excuse me. So now let's go ahead and here. So let's, we, let's start with the ring gear. Like we said, we know that the input speed is 300, there's 3000 RPM. And it's coming in through the ring gear. So we can set that equation. You know, so y minus x, you know, the sun over the ring, or over yeah, the ring, teeth in the ring, is equal to 3,000 RPM. So we can turn this into simultaneous equations. Right? So we got a ratio of the um, sun and ring teeth. But we don't know what the x and y value are. So we can go ahead and just solve for y as equal 3,000 plus 0.2 times x. So we got one equation here. And now we can look at the sun, which we can set at 0. You know, x plus y is going to be 0. So now we can substitute for y into that equation. So now we've got an equation with one unknown in it. And we have an x value of going at uh, 2,500 RPM. And that is going uh, counterclockwise. Or, excuse me, it's going clockwise. It's in the negative direction. Um, counterclockwise is positive. Clockwise is negative. And that is basically the, the sun gear um, without taking in its relative motion to the ring gear. Or excuse me, the, the arm. Now, knowing that x value, we know that the uh, arm is going to get 2,500 RPM in the opposite direction. We're just plugging that back into either one of these two equations. You know, either one of the, these two equations, you would end up with y is equal to 2,500, a positive 2,500. So it's 2,500 going uh, counterclockwise. So that is the output. You know, that's, you know, that told us what the value of y in the, uh, for the arm is. So we got an output of 2,500 RPM, and it did what we expected to do in underdrive. It went from 3,000 RPM, and we uh, stepped it down to 2,500. Now, we were also asked about the torque. We expect the torque to go up, and we also know that the velocity ratio, the rules of velocity ratio actually apply. So we do expect that the torque to have that inverse relationship with the velocity, or uh, the speed. So the torque... You know, input speed versus the output speed. So we got 300 newton meters of torque. You know, and we have 3,000 uh, divided by 2,500. Comes out to 360 newton meters of torque. And this is using the tabular method. You know, so that's the tabular method of calculating the torque. And it did what we would expect in a... Uh, underdrive condition. We expect the velocity to go down and we expect the torque to go up. Now, let's solve this same problem using the algebraic method. And the algebraic method, you know, 
those are equations that we can derive, you know, based purely on the number of teeth and gear ratios in the setup. And there's a, another video as how that algebra method was done. And I've got a couple of conditions pre-calculated for us in, a, in another video. So this is a table I've, I've shown before. Uh, again, we got the same conditions. The ring is the input and the arm is the output. The input speed is 3000 RPM and the input torque is 300. The ring is stationary. So we're looking at a condition where the, the ring is the input. The arm is the output. I have it labeled here as the carrier and the ring, the sun is stationary. So we've got this equation, one plus the number of teeth on the sun divided by the number of teeth on the ring will get us a velocity. These are calculated for our velocity ratio using the algebraic method. So we look at this equation and use this equation to help us out. So ring is the input, arm is the output. And that's the equation we're going to use. So we've got 200 teeth plus 40 teeth divided by 200 teeth. All this is acknowledging that, that a common denominator between the two, you know. And that comes out to a 1.2. So the velocity ratio is 1.2. So from there, we can calculate the torque and the velocity because we know what both of those are. So for the output speed, it's 3,000 divided by 1.2, and we've gotten 2,500 which is exactly what we got using the tabular method. And then for the output torque, we multiply it by 300 newton meters at 1.2, and that gets us 360 newton meters. So this just showed you the, you know, the relationship between the tabular method and the algebraic method. Um, you know, kind of a simplified version of how the tabular method works as well as kind of you know the calculations that you would use to correlate to the uh, the algebraic method. Uh, and this is Professor Cummings. Uh, go ahead and, and like, comment, you know, share this video with somebody who might need it. Um, and you know, I'll see you on the next video.